So everyone give it up for Johnny. All right, hey everyone. I'm excited uh, to be up here and sharing kind of my talk. What's really cool is the Nomad Summit has grown way beyond the meetup for the Travel Like a Boss podcast or the Johnny FD blog. Really, like, probably a majority of you have no idea who I am, which is great. <laughs> that means the brand has become something, like, way bigger. And I want to give a shout out to the rest of the team who's actually all working remote in Thailand right now. So we have... Like, we have Heather, she's on social media. We have Alexandra, she's sending out all the email updates and the survey they're gonna get later. Uh, we have Rachel, who's doing all the graphics and preparing everything for the next year's event. And it's really, really amazing that we're able to be kind of all around the world and to be able to do this together. And, but I wouldn't have the time, money, or energy to be able to do any of this if it wasn't for having passive income and other streams of money coming in to be able to pay for my basic bills. And especially now that I'm no longer living in a $2 hut in Thailand. So the word passive income brings out a lot of emotion. And I want you guys to think about it for a second. Like what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Is it a positive emotion or a negative emotion? It, good, I love that. All right. But there's some people, usually people who aren't willing to come to a live conference, who are literally right now writing negative comments on YouTube. <laughs> and none of this nomad stuff works. Online business doesn't work. And it's sad because passive income is a real thing. And it's amazing. And I really hope that every single person leaves today, not only with a better understanding of what actually it is, but also how to build it for yourself and why it's so important for each one of us, regardless if you're working for a remote team uh, or we're an entrepreneur or we have our own business, to have at least one additional stream. I'm curious right, right now, who here has at least, like besides your, your main income, has another stream of passive income? Wow, that is amazing. That's probably why you can be here right now in Cancun and not, you know, worried about money, you know, slaving away at home, working a nine-to-five job. But for everyone watching on YouTube, but also for the, the rest of uh, the people who didn't raise their hand, like, why, why is passive income such a nice thing? It's not just because money is a nice thing. It's what that money buys us that's really, really important and vital. Passive income buys us the freedom of time so we can take a few days off or a week off to come to Cancun, go down to Playa del Carmen, to go to Thailand. It gives us the freedom of location so we can continue working even from these exotic destinations. And it allows us to pursue our passion projects. So whether it's training for a triathlon like our photographer Marie's doing, or starting some kind of charity, or working for uh, you know, another business, or learning another language, or even you know, creating projects or businesses that may one day, and hopefully one day, become profitable, but right now might cost you money, might be bleeding you money and time, like this conference. <laughs> And I love it so much. I love the, the fact that I have other income coming in where I don't have to stress whether this conference is going to be profitable or not. I would like it to be. And the goal is for one day for it to be so profitable, I can tell the whole team, like, yeah, fly out from Thailand. You know, go ahead and check that business class ticket. But right now, it's, you know, it's, it's bootstrapped like a lot of our businesses are. And... To be honest, the last time I checked, which was last night, before, right before I went to bed, which is a terrible time to check financials, <laughs> this conference, all in all, including paying for all the staff, the, the venue rentals, all, all the things that kind of co come along with it, it's negative $8,000 in profit. <sighs> which sucks, right? <laughs> I'm not going to say it's great. but. I haven't been stressed. 
Like, if you, if you see me, like, I really, it's not that big of a deal because I know that eventually, you know, it'll pay itself off, hopefully. And even if it doesn't, at least I have enough money coming in from my other sources where I, I'm in a position where I can do this. We can do this for six years in a row, having some of them be profitable, some of them not, some of them breaking even, to continue to grow it because this is something I really believe in. This is something I really love. I love seeing all your faces. I love meeting people. I love hearing the stories from people who went to previous conferences and said, hey, I met my business partner there. I learned a new idea there. I scaled my business from there. And you know, coming to the Nomad Summit really helped change my life. To me, that's priceless. That's worth way more than $8,000. And if it wasn't for other income coming in, I just wouldn't be able to do it. I would have to just you know, get clients, freelance, work on my business, slave away. So whether you have hobbies or business or charity or something else that you know is more important to you and more important to your future than just making money now, that's where passive income comes in. So now I have my two podcasts. I have Travel Like a Boss podcast where I interview entrepreneurs who I meet traveling and ask them about how their businesses and how they grew it, and how they started. And then Invest Like a Boss podcast, where me and my co-host interview like fintech companies or other investors and ask, how do you invest your money? How do you get started? What's, you know, what's the best way to diversify? What, what are the new funds? You know, what are things to avoid? And we have the Nomad Summit. And it's been a long journey, to be honest. It started in 2007 when I read The 4-Hour Workweek. Woo! Who's read Tim Ferriss' book? Nice. All right. And I took the first half of it. I was like, all right, I'm going to move to Thailand, and then I'll figure out the rest. <laughs> so I worked as a, as a scuba diving instructor and dive master for four years, and I loved it. I went diving every day, I wore board shorts, I lived on different islands, I worked all around Thailand, I worked in Borneo, I worked in the Caribbean, you know, I really got to move around and really live a dream life. But I always you know, would meet these guys who had been doing it for a long time, and they were always burnt out, they always hated it, and they no longer enjoyed the sunsets, they never, no longer enjoyed the diving, they didn't even want to talk to the guests anymore. And to me, it was, I, I never wanted to get into that position. So. You know, I was like, what else can I do? And I was like, oh, I'm in Thailand. There's this thing called kickboxing. Maybe I can become a pro fighter. <laughs> Did that for a couple of years. I really enjoyed it. <laughs> Turns out, you know, it's also kind of hard to do. <laughs> so I was like, all right, I can't, I can't you know, wake up at 5 a.m. every day to set up boats and go out scuba diving. I can't fight in the ring every single weekend and, you know, like literally fight for my rent money. And I was like, what else can I do? So I Googled, how do you make money online? And this was in 2013. And there wasn't that much information out there. Now we're very lucky. There's a ton of information. The bad news is there's, all, there's a ton of information. So, so you really have to sort out what's good and what's bad. And that's one reason why I love having my podcast and the Nomad Summit is because I can curate what actually works and give that to people who are either starting out or wanting to grow. And this is something I wish existed in 2013 when I started because there was a very good chance that instead of clicking that you know, second link, I would have clicked the first link and I would be doing some you know, crazy business right now that may, may not work. So I was very, very fortunate that I happened to meet the right people, get into the right businesses, and through those you know, kind of mentorships, through buying online courses, through buying books, actually spending money on my own de development, taking people out to dinner, I was able to really grow my business. The first year I made you know, probably 40 grand online, I was like, wow, this is amazing. This is enough to, to replace my nine to five job back home. And, and by the time it was 2016, I made $325,000 from my business. And I never thought, in, you know, my entire life, and that's probably more than my parents have ever made combined since they've been in the US for 25 years. And now I'm able to give them money every month, I'm able to pay their property taxes, I'm in a really nice position. But a lot of it was because I didn't spend all that money. Anyone who has been following my blog or my YouTube channel, you'll know that 
even when I was making $20,000 a month or $30,000 a month in profit, I was still only spending $400 a month on my rent in Thailand. And that was an upgrade from my $200 a month place. <laughs> and what that's allowed me to do is buy investments and really create streams of passive income. I had the time and the money to be able to sit down and be like, okay, what other streams of income can I create? So the talk today, I'm gonna show you how I did it, kind of show you the behind the scenes of the dashboards on what it's actually like. All right, but first we have to kind of define what is passive income, because we hear this term, right? Really, to, be, to, to make it simple, it's cash flow today or in the future for work that you've done prior. It doesn't mean you just like enter your email somewhere or buy something and all of a sudden you have passive income. It means you have to do some kind of work. But really what makes it passive is it doesn't require that much maintenance after you've set it up. Yeah, maybe you have to log in here and there, do some things, but you're not working 40 hours a week anymore. You, know, you may be working four hours a week, like the book. There's other terms that we kind of like to call passive income, but really isn't, things that are actually semi-passive. And this includes drop shipping or e-commerce or even Amazon, which, you know, businesses I like, and sometimes, you know, we'll mistakenly be like, yeah, you know, it's passive income because we make the sales while we're sleeping because we're in a different time zone or while we're on a boat or while we're out here. But really, we're still spending a lot of time building it, growing it, managing it. And then we have what's definitely not passive income, active income. You know, you work, you're trading time for money. You're freelancing one-on-one. -on -one. You're not... You know, you're not managing a team, you're literally billing per hour, or you, you know, you're building the business yourself. So here's the thing is, there's really three categories that most people fall into, all right? Most of the people that are not here at the live event who are on Reddit complaining about why passive income doesn't work, they're in category number one. And or you have people who, you know, maybe they're at home and they're like, they get excited. They, they kind of hear a little bit about, uh, you know, entrepreneurship or online, online business or being a digital nomad. And they might fall for number two. They're like, oh, all I have to do is buy this, you know, $300 ebook and in 24 hours I'll have passive income. And then you have the cynics who are like, you know what, I've read everything there is about there. I've watched every video out there. I've been studying this for 24 months, I'm ready to get started. But it's not worth my time because you know, most passive income sources, I've seen the screenshots, they don't make that much money, it's not worth my time, I can't live off of that. And they're kind of right in some cases, and that's the problem is with kind of all this information out there, it's really hard to decode what, what, what's real. So if you look at some of my screenshots of like my monthly income reports, which I post on my blog every month, you might be like, Johnny makes 150 bucks a month from YouTube. That's not enough to live. I can't even live in Thailand for that. I can't even live in this hut. And you know, you might look at my book royalties and be like, he's making like 50 bucks a month selling ebooks. Like, that's not enough to live. Like, it's not even worth my time writing a book if I'm gonna make 50 bucks a month. And these are kind of, these are things that are kind of true, right? And, and on, on the right, the other example is my courses on Udemy. And you're like, you know what? Even all these added together aren't really enough for me to even live a basic life. What's the point of even spending time creating passive income? Why should I even write a book? Why should I um, create a course? Why should I you know, even create a YouTube channel? And what people are missing is the calculation of the lifetime value of the effort you put in today, and what it'll pay you throughout the years, throughout the months, throughout the years. So really, if you write the book, you're not rewriting it every year. You're writing it once, and as long as it's still relevant and people are buying it, every month you're getting that check. And I'm gonna show you the actual case studies. This is my first book I ever wrote, 12 Weeks in Thailand, The Good Life on the Cheap. And this was me, you know, almost, what? six years ago, and I was like a big partier. Like you see me at every full moon party every weekend. I was doing Muay Thai, I was scuba diving. I was, you know, it was, it was, it was a little bit like embarrassing to be honest. But if you're 20, you know, you're 25, 
and you're like, I want to move to Thailand, I want to party every weekend, and I want to kickbox, and I want to go to like, you know, these all-night parties, this book is for you. And there's plenty of people who find that, buy the book today, and you know, leave these great reviews for it because they love it. And what that has done is over time, that one book, even though it only makes me 50 bucks a month on average now, all that added up since 2013, the last six years, it's made me over $12,000 in completely passive income. Because I've never updated the book. I don't even promote it very much. I hardly talk about it. And I, I don't have to deal with the customer service because Amazon does it. I don't have to even ask for reviews. They automatically send something out for it. And I've done little things like on the last page saying, hey, if you like the book, leave a review. Little things like that. So it's completely passive. My second book, which didn't take me very long to write either, you know, uh, the first one took me a little bit longer because it's my first book, and it was longer. This one, Life Changes Quick, I wrote, in, I wrote most of it on a flight from Thailand to Europe. And, you know, but it took me a little while to edit and everything. And I spent 20 bucks a paying someone to make the cover. But in the last five years, that book's now made me $4,000. Not very much per month, but all these things add up. And when I asked myself, you know, was 20 bucks, 20 bucks, $20 investment and, you know, a couple months back then when I was broke anyways, worth four grand and con that continues to pay me, yeah, it was. My courses on Udemy, which is this platform that sells really like discounted courses. They sell like $10 courses all the time, which is a reason why a lot of people don't like it. I like it though because it's completely passive. Once you put it up there, Udemy does all the promotion for you, they do all the customer service, and you can tell because if you look at the center column, it's pretty much like, I, I think I, one person bought it through one of my links. Everything else is through Udemy Organic, uh, their affiliate program, their ad program, where they are actually taking out ads on Google and Facebook and other places with my course, and if someone buys it, they take a crazy like, 80% or something, but I did none of the work, so it's fine. <laughs> and most of these courses, I've had, I had six now. They took me like one or two months to make. Didn't really cost me anything. You know, I used a microphone, like a USB mic. I used my webcam on my old MacBook, and I put it up there. And in total, these courses have now made me $20,000. And this is a lot of money when I was you know, living in a $200 a month apartment in Chiang Mai. And here's a case study. This is my best performing course. It's called Small Talk Networking. It has nothing to do with business and nothing to do with uh, entrepreneurship. You know. But me uh, and my girlfriend at the time, who was an English teacher, wanted to create something together. And we were like, hey, I heard about this Udemy thing. Let's check it out. And she was, you know, she was a psychology major, so she was really into it. So we were like, okay, let's make this. And what's cool is we, till this day, Udemy automatically splits the profit, sends me half, sends her half. So even though we broke up, you know, three years ago now, and I don't want to have, call her every month, but like, hey, you know, can I have my, uh, my $27? <laughs> <laughs> Udemy automatically does it. It doesn't get any more passive than that. <laughs> so this course has now made us in total about 11 grand. Even my YouTube channel, which it's not passive because if I never, if I don't make videos, less and less people will find my old videos. That's correct. But if you look at most of my actual um, like top, top performing videos, these are videos I made like five years ago. There's literally one of me filming them building my hut. I was training this Muay Thai gym in Phuket, Thailand, and I was so fascinated that they were gonna build my hut that I was gonna live in for the next couple of months that day. They're like, oh, you need a place to live? Yeah, we'll build one. <laughs> and I was like, okay. So I filmed the whole thing, and I was like, this is cool. You know, this is something I wanna share with people. Um, then I moved into an apartment. I upgraded, spent 200 bucks a month in Chiang Mai. I had a nice place and I was so excited. I made this video called my, 200, my new $200 a month apartment in Chiang Mai. Put that on YouTube and you could tell I look nothing like that anymore because that was so long ago. But that video still makes me money every month. You know, uh, We were bored so we're like, let's make a, a video of us trying Thai McDonald's. 
and which Balka's in, I think. <laughs> no, was it wasn't you? Oh, but okay, so it was that time we were both living in Chiang Mai, and it was literally we were at a co working space, and we were like, Oh, we're going to eat lunch today. And I said, Hey, how, how about we go to McDonald's? I want to, like, I've been watching this BuzzFeed video, like, it looks pretty popular, let's, let's go make it. So we went, we ordered a bunch of, you know, random stuff, uh, like, that they only have in Thailand, and I made a video, and that video still makes me money today, which is really cool. <laughs> right? So, all these things kind of, like, slowly start to add up, and part of it's the money, but part of it is really just, it's exciting to me. It's fun to learn new businesses, it's, it's fun to work on things. So, when I first started into Amazon, uh, affiliate marketing, I chose Amazon as a partner because everyone buys everything on Amazon anyways. And all I would do is I would review the things I had personally bought and liked and recommended, things I was recommending to my friends anyways. I just recommended packing cubes to my buddy Chris, and he loves it. And he's like, Johnny, this is the best thing I've, I've ever, ever gotten. And I was like, I know, I've been telling you. So... Imagine being able to do that on your blog or YouTube channel, or email list, or your Facebook, whatever it is, and ha you know, getting a percentage. It might be like 7 or 8% or something, but having Amazon give you an affiliate cut for it. And what's really cool is if you make a good review, especially if you put it on YouTube as a video or you write a nice blog post about it, people continue to find it. So this backpack that, that I had bought uh, after I had gotten something stolen out of mine while traveling, I was you know. I was like, you know what? I'm really excited about this new PackSafe bag that has like this like metal mesh inside so someone can't cut it and things can't drop off. And you can like, has all these cool features. Uh, that gets a ton of views and people probably buy one, at least one of those a month for my link. The microphones that I use for my podcast and my videos, who people are always asking me about, made a review on that where I actually tested the sound of the, all the different mics I've tried. That continues to make me money every month. And in total, I made about, $7,900, almost eight grand so far from links like this. And then people always ask me about web hosting, right? Whether it's WordPress or my e-commerce stores. And I would recommend, you know, uh, SiteGround for my WordPress or Shopify for my e-commerce stores. And I would have it in like an FAQ, I'd have it on my recommended resources page on my, on my blog, I'd have it in an email, maybe in a YouTube video. And what's really cool is even though, yeah, like it takes me a while to write these things or create those videos, but every single month when someone clicks, you know, shopify.com slash johnnyfd and signs up for e-commerce or uh, hosting through Shopify, I get a cut of that. And now in total, I've made $18,000 from just sharing the link of sharing what I personally use. And I'm a big fan of double dipping. So I figure I like sharing information. I like figuring things out and then I like sharing it. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to make a course about how to make money from affiliate marketing. And I was like, uh, well, first people need to learn how to set up a blog. So I created a short course called Blogging Bootcamp, which really just a lead magnet to the bigger course. And that bigger course, yeah, it took me a long time to make. You know, I, I spent the summer in Ukraine and I was kind of bored most days. So I was like just making these videos and making the course. So it took me, you know, a couple of weeks of doing it full time, but that course has now made me $24,000. And what's really cool is, if you notice, there's always a plus at the end of each one of these, and it's because it's not the lifetime value total, it's the lifetime value so far. Because I guarantee that even in this, this weekend, while I haven't been checking my email or anything, people have been buying these things, whether it's a link off, you know, off my Amazon sites or uh, my course or, uh, you know, a backpack I recommended, whatever it is, that's passive income that, that comes in. Next week, when I'm in Playa del Carmen, I'm going to be underwater scuba diving. And I'm still going to make sales and money's still going to come in. That's what makes it passive income. Now, even though people like to call dropshipping passive income, it isn't. <laughs> it's a lot of freaking work. And I, I didn't actually calculate how many hours I've spent on it, but let's say it's like 600 plus hours, all right? It's a lot of work, it's like running a business. But it was also something that made me a good amount of money. It was the very first thing that, I, that ever actually replaced my nine to five income. So I started with Amazon, Kindle Publishing, and I made you know, uh, some money here and there, like 600 bucks a month or something. 
But it was kind of hard to live, in, even in Thailand, continuously, where some, day, some months I would only make 200, a good month I might make 600. So when I got into e-commerce, into dropshipping, I was like, oh, this is cool. I'm actually making you know, two, three grand a month in profit. That's way more than I need to live in Thailand where it's really cheap. So I've now created a bunch of stores and I actually still have stores now, but today it is passive because I have partners who run the store day to day and I log in you know, once every few weeks, once a month to kind of make sure everything's going well. You know, I talk with them to see like what we can improve on. So yeah, now it's become passive income because I have a partner running it. But it didn't start off that way. But what's cool is in the last maybe now what six years, it's been my kind of primary business. And through the money that I made each month from each of the stores, you know, anywhere between two grand on a slow month to seven thousand in profit on a good month. And combined with actually selling the stores and then starting new ones, I've now made over $250,000 from just those stores. And that's where we get into the second part of passive income. The first half is all kind of like solopreneur, entrepreneur ways to create income online. Most of it is passive. But the difference between the first half of the things I showed you and this next half is the first half, it takes a lot of time. It takes time to set up. I'm, I'm the one creating things or filming things or building things. The second half, when you buy passive income streams, you're not spending as much time setting it up, but you're spending a lot more money. So writing a book doesn't really cost anything. Right? You gotta buy a typewriter if you're a hipster. <laughs> Maybe a Starbucks. <laughs> but really, like, you're just typing it up in, on WordPad, right? You know, you might pay someone 20 bucks to make the cover, but really there's not any cost to self-publishing a book. Even with like, you know, creating an online store, it might cost you two or three thousand dollars to start a dropshipping store. You know, you gotta test ads, you gotta, you know, you gotta outsource some things, you gotta create the site, but really it's not that much money to start. What does cost money is when you buy investments. One of my favorite investments is index funds. And all they are is a way that they can track the entire stock market. So instead of you buying like individual stocks, which is kind of like gambling, or also kind of like a full-time job, you just buy the whole stock market, because in general, things kind of just slowly go up over time. And this is a snapshot of my account. I started with $0 in 2015. And as I started you know, making money, I would save most of it, I, I would only spend like 25% of what I made and I would just invest the other 75%, which was a huge benefit of living in Thailand. You can do also do this here in Mexico, we're not partying too much. <laughs> and it's been a huge benefit of being location dependent. The, the money that we save on taxes all went to investments. The money that I wasn't spending on, you know, gas or on, you know, uh, bills, that was all going through investments. So it's all kind of added up. And I've, I've probably invested now over $200,000 in this account, but it's also made me now $55,000 completely passive. And what's really cool about investing is they've done studies showing that the best investors, the ones that who actually make the most amount of money, are not people who log into their accounts every day and are actively managing it, they're actually the people who either died or forgot their password. <laughs> so really, it's like the best passive income in, in many senses. Uh, but Vanguard, the downside is I still have to log in every month and be like, do I want to invest three grand this month? Okay, yeah, I should do it. What's cool about robo-advisors like Wealthfront or Betterment is everything is completely automated. It's, it's literally a robotic advisor. And I have it set up so it automatically takes money out of my bank account every single month and puts it into this blend of bonds and stocks and kind of random things. And I've now put in about 40 grand, but it somehow made me almost 11 in the last, I don't know how many years I've had it. So all these things that kind of add up end up creating 
streams of income that you don't really have to worry about. And to be honest, I'm not even like absolutely sure if those numbers are 100% correct because I never log into these. I literally tried to make this last night when I, like after the party before bed. I was like, oh, that, that's about right. But all I know is I put money in and I get way more out of it. Same with real estate funds. So I've always wanted to own real estate, whether it's a house or you know, a rental property. And it's something I kind of dream about, right? I think a lot of us grew up in that generation where our parents and our grandparents were like, you should buy a house. You know, like, why don't you buy a house yet? And it's because it's been a really, really good investment for them. It's a kind of a forced savings plan. Things kind of appreciate over time. But what I value more than just money is no responsibility. <laughs> That's the truth. <laughs> All right? If someone said, like, hey, Johnny, you can make more money if you, like, you know, if you, like, scout these houses, if you, you know, uh, you, you, like, you remodel them, you flip them. I'm like, nah, I don't want to do it. <laughs> I like having everything on a dashboard, everything online. And with Fundrise and all these different types of online real estate funds, you basically go on, you put money in, and then you say what you want. They buy the properties. You invest like smaller uh, portions of your money pooled with a lot of people, so it's more diversified. And then you log into your dashboard and you kind of see what you made. And I've, you know, invested about 55 grand so far, and it's made me $9,700 so far since 2016. And if you notice, 2016 is kind of 2015, 2016 is kind of the time that most of my investments started, and that's because that was the first year that I made a, like a lot of money, and that's also the year I sold my store. Other kind of random uh, ways to invest your money is things like Peer Street, which is peer-to-peer -peer lending. Uh, I started with, with Lending Club, but I didn't like it because the loans weren't secured, so if someone didn't pay off the loan, there's nothing I can do about it. They're just like, sorry, <laughs> it's gone. But with Pure Street, what they do is they hold on to the deed of the, the house or the property when they make a loan. And what that means is if they don't pay back the loan, they take back the house. And instead of me having to deal with flying to Alberta, Canada and saying, hey man, you've been three months late, you, know, you need to get out, they do that. <laughs> And they have a whole team of, you know, <clears throat> lawyers, they have a whole team of, like, real estate agents finding new properties, they have a whole team of accountants. It's, a, like, a pretty big operation. I was just there for the Invest Like a Boss Summit three weeks ago, and they have, like, 150 employees there. And it's a really cool operation. And what it is is, instead of you making a loan to one person, so you, you're loaning out 100 grand to someone, which is kind of a big risk, you put it into a, this you know, Pure Street Fund, and you can say, I'm gonna give this person a thousand, this person a thousand, this person a thousand, this person a thousand, and diversify that over a hundred different loans, and that way, you don't have all your eggs in one basket. I now, I think I currently have about 63 properties that I've given between one and two thousand dollars for, and once in a while, something's late or something defaults, but it's not that big of a deal, because it's only like a small percentage now. So, on average, I make between 7 and 8% interest, and uh, in, in total, I've made about $14,000 in the few years that I've been investing with Pure Street. So, why am I showing you all this? It's because I want to show you there are so many ways nowadays, especially in 2019, 2022, to invest your money. It's like, really, there's no excuse why everyone shouldn't have at least one or two streams of passive income. You know, regardless if you want to you know, invest in stocks or index funds or real estate or peer-to-peer -peer lending or you know, uh, create, like, you know, write books or the things that I haven't even personally done but I've now interviewed people on the podcast and I know it works because they've done it. Whether it's creating stock photos or videos or drone footage to put online for sale. Music for royalties. Um, you know, artists or, you know, creator, uh, creatives can create prints that get printed on demand onto t-shirts or onto bags, uh, onto magnets or stickers. And people creating websites for lead generation, you know, whether it's a, you know, 
a YouTube video or static website through SEO where you know, someone's looking for a local doctor or lawyer in whatever small city that you might be from. I've, I've met people who've literally bought into like vending machine businesses or ice machine businesses or even water dispensary businesses. And I met them in Thailand while their business is somewhere in, like in mid-America and they just have someone who manages it. I met people who you know, have created mobile apps or games. Sometimes they just reskin a game, they don't even make it themselves. Uh, they create web apps, templates, you know, Photoshop presets. You know, if you're a hot girl with an Instagram channel and you can be like, hey, you want your photos to look like mine? Download my presets. <laughs> you ever seen that? That's passive income. Like, chances are they didn't even make those presets. <laughs> They're just reselling it. But what's really cool is these are things that you can create once and continue selling and, and have a stream of income coming in. So really, there's so many ways now where if you just listen to either my podcasts, Travel Like a Boss or Invest Like a Boss, you'll learn a lot about all of them. Right? And kind of the big message that I want everyone to have is it is not easy. It, like if you knew me in 2013 and 2016, I was working so much and all I like, thought about all day was business. Like, I was literally, I lived at the co-working space. I chose my apartment because it was literally right behind the co-working space. That's where I spent all day. I would go there and hang out on weekends. That's all I thought about. And it worked, you know, that, that drive, that hustle, it made me a lot of money. But I'm so fortunate that instead of just blowing it all, like most of my friends did, and having nothing left over, I was lucky enough or smart enough to actually invest it and buy assets instead of liabilities. I, I kid you not, I have friends in Chiang Mai who would spend $40,000 a month living in a five-star hotel, like, you know, you know, buying like expensive wine, like renting like Ducatis. Like literally I had friends who stayed at the most expensive hotel, bought a 60-inch TV and a a PlayStation, the new PlayStation, and a bunch of games. And I was like, aren't you leaving in two weeks? I was like, what are you gonna do with it? He's like, oh, just leave it. And I'm like, what are you guys doing? Like, I know you're making a lot of money now. They were making like 30 grand a month or more at the time. And, but it doesn't matter how much you make per month, it's how much you end up keeping, but also more importantly, what that money makes you in the future. It's not easy, but I know every single person in here is smart enough and capable enough and has the skills, the network now that you've met each other and the tools now that you've heard a lot of these talks to be able to do something that will create you, and it'll really set you up for the rest of your life if you wanted to. So if you haven't read the book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, who has read it? Nice. I love this audience, man. You guys are amazing. If you, if you haven't read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, the big takeaway, and I do encourage you to read it, is when you buy something, ask yourself, what is the ROI of me buying this thing? Is it actually making me money or is it gonna end up costing me more money in the long run? And it doesn't mean you can't buy the latest iPhone or the latest MacBook or a drone or a new, you know, new camera. It's, if you just buy things to buy it, it ends up costing you way more money and headache and time than if you just never bought it in the first place, not to mention losing out on that investment you could have made. Even if you put 300 bucks or 1,000 bucks into some kind of investment, that continues to make you money for the rest of your life. If you put $1,000 into a new handbag or even a new iPhone, that's gonna cost you at least $1,000 every few years because now you're not gonna be able to live without it. You have to replace it. When it breaks, you don't have to fix it. You don't have to buy insurance for it. So calculate the ROI, the return on investment for your purchases. I really wanted to upgrade my 2013 MacBook Air. I've been wanting to for the last three years. And even though I was making a lot of money, I would, I would calculate the ROI every year. I'm like, okay, if I buy this, what, what am I actually like, getting from it? Can I, you know, can I make more money from this laptop, this new one, than my old one? And the answer has been no so far. Like, I'm like, it's working for everything I need. 
And there's not really a big reason to upgrade besides I can have a nicer looking screen. Like, that doesn't make me more money. That just makes me smile a bit, right? I'm like, is that worth $1,800 and the headaches of the keyboard breaking every other month? No. Uh, I wanted a drone. I really wanted a drone. I thought they were so cool. And I was like, oh, this would be awesome. But I was like, you know what? If I buy a drone, it's 1000 bucks. I buy, like, two batteries, you know, new blades, case, all the stuff. Like, am I really going to, like, is this really going to make me even $1,000 over the lifetime of it for my YouTube channel or for my, you know, am I, am I like going out and, and creating better videos or selling things? Like me personally, no. But if you're a photographer or a videographer and that's your job and you're like, yeah, I'll make that back up in, you know, three months, then yes, then you buy it. I am so happy that I have the new iPhone because <laughs> my last one was a 7 Plus, which is so old. <laughs> And the reason why I haven't upgraded until now is because uh, up until now, nothing, not that much has changed. You know, I'm like the, the, you know, the 8 wasn't really that much better. The 10 wasn't even really that much better. It wasn't until the 11 that they actually had better cameras. And I was like, okay, now I see all the ROI because I'm going to create better photos, better videos. I'm going to make the money back from it. That's why I bought it. That's why I look so happy in that Apple store. <laughs> and even little things, right, that don't seem like a big deal, like, I know it's annoying to like, be like, you know, do I want to get a third glass of wine or like, you know, do I want to get the expensive wine versus the house wine? It's not that you can't ever get it, but it's just realize that there, you're giving something up for the pleasure of that. Because if you're, you know, spending 20 bucks here and there going out to eat instead of cooking at home, you're spending, you know, 20 bucks here and there having drinks instead of just, you know, having one drink and having water the rest of the night or not going out to, you know, to party all the time. All these things end up adding up. And if, you don't, you know, if you're not saving at least 20% you know, of your income every month, I guarantee almost everyone here can shave something away that isn't really needed to be able to invest and kind of save for your future. And I don't know everyone's personal situation, but I would guarantee that if you really sat down and you made it a priority, you would figure out a way to buy into passive income, which is literally a, like a life hack. It, it sounds so ridiculous, and it's something that I think a lot of us gloss over when we're broke. Like when I had no money, I would never read an investment book or listen to an investment podcast. But that's probably when I should have been doing it, because I was broke. <laughs> and if you're in a position right now where you're like, well, I don't have any money to save or invest anyways, Rewind this talk, watch this again on YouTube, listen to the podcast, read these books, because you're probably the, the one that would benefit the most from it. So one thing that I do want to leave you guys with that is kind of counterintuitive kind of is what I've done kind of in my life is not necessarily what you should do, especially because I've done so many different businesses. I have in so many random investments. It's a lot to keep track of. If you ask my accountant, he hates me. <laughs> I, get, I literally get like 25 1099 tax forms at the end of the year. And he's like, oh, you have 25 jobs? I'm like, no, I just like trying things. <laughs> and like, you made $19 from like Amazon, like, you know, Germany or something. Like, wh why do you even have this form? Like, I don't know. All right. <laughs> but... In my personality, I love experimenting, figuring things out. And what I've kind of learned from it and what I can share with you is everything works. Like everything that I mentioned, all the different speakers today, all their, all their businesses, they all work. And what you're doing right now probably also works as long as you dedicate to it and you focus on it and you do it correctly. Don't jump around at, like, as much as I did. Even with investments, invest in like three or four things that you understand. Don't get so excited like me and every, you know, every other podcast episode, but like, yeah, I'll put 20 grand in that. Because <laughs> it ends up being a lot to manage. <laughs> so if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer it. If you want to find me, Johnny FDK, my blog is johnnyfd.com. Uh, if you want to download these slides, uh, just go to nomadsummit.com slash passive income and subscribe to the podcast because really it ha this has such good information in it from everyone that I've personally met uh, through my network that we've interviewed on these two podcasts. Thanks.
I think that's it. I was, it's been really, really exciting. I, I, I wish the team was all here, but we do have a smaller team. So I want to take this moment to thank Chris, who's been co-organizing, doing the slides this whole time. Chris, you, you want to come up here? Chris, come up, come up here, Chris. All right. Yeah. We have uh, Megan and, to and Tori, who have been checking people in the whole time. Come up here as well. We'd love to have you. We have all the speakers who flew out here, and actually all the workshop hosts who, who uh, you've heard from already, but are going to be uh, giving their, their workshops on Monday. Can you guys come up here as well? All right. All right, so they can't come up here because they have to make videos, the hardworking people in the back, but we have all the, the whole team creating these amazing videos that we're going to share with you guys for free on our YouTube channel, so make sure you subscribe to Nomad Summit. Uh, so we have, I think, Mike up there, we have Valentina here making the promo videos, we have the photographers. We have Marie, so even though you guys can't put down your cameras, thank you guys so much for your help.